Howdy once again, it's Tubal Cain, and this time with Machine Shop Tips number 281 entitled Removing Stuck Lathe Chucks. And it even rhymes. You know, from time to time, uh, people contact me and they have a problem removing the chuck from their threaded lathe spindle. And now I'm talking about these smaller lathes, not the great big ones. And I'm talking about threaded spindles only, not the other kinds of spindles. But if a chuck has been on the lathe for many, many years, and uh, somebody didn't put a couple drops of oil on there before they installed it, and the, uh, the machine is outdoors uh, in an unheated garage, and things like that, the chucks can get stuck. And how do you remove them? And uh, this has been a perennial problem for a lot of you, and I'm sure some people out there have chucks that are stuck permanently and we just have a dedicated lathe with a dedicated chuck. So here's some ideas for you. How do you remove your chucks, even those that are not stuck? And people are going to disagree with this uh, and, uh, and some of these things are hard on the chucks, but you, you have to have uh, some way of, of gripping them or holding on to them and be sure and unplug your lathe when you're you know, doing this kind of work for safety purposes. But in the past I've always uh, put the lathe in back gears because you have to lock the spindle and really locking the spindle is what this lathe is all about. And then just putting the, the chuck key in there and sometimes you can just bang, uh, bang it with the palm of your hand or use a, a lead hammer and, and that's going to come loose. Another way of doing it is to use a uh, adjustable wrench and put that on the chuck jaws and I know some people are going to say that that hurts it but how else are you going to hold on to it and then you can break it loose very easily and this is a 12 inch adjustable wrench. Another way of doing it is to put a hexagon stock into the lathe chuck jaws. This is a three jaw of course now. Four jaw you could use a a square stock, piece of square stock, but uh, grip that and hold this with a, with a crescent wrench. But let me talk first of all about how to lock the spindle. And, uh, this lathe, this is a Logan, has cast iron back gears and right now I have engaged the back gears and that locks the spindle. And that's fine and dandy if your chuck comes off easily without banging on it. But I have seen many lathes with missing teeth and I'm just presuming that that is probably how the teeth got damaged. So be very careful when, when banging on your chuck or your lathe so you don't break those because you have essentially ruined the lathe and need to take it to the landfill if you break those teeth off. Now I'm at the Atlas Craftsman lathe, and remember that these gears are made of Zamac. And Zamac, if you watch my other videos, is an alloy of zinc, aluminum, and copper. And that is even more delicate, and I have had people contact me saying, where can I get new gears? Well, basically you can't. So uh, do not lock your back gears on an Atlas lathe and bang on that chuck, because you're going to strip one. So, uh, and actually on an Atlas lathe, I say back gears, they're below gears, I guess, but I use the term back gears. So, getting back to what I told you a few minutes ago, this entire video from here on out is devoted to how you're going to lock the spindle in order to uh, unscrew the chuck. So there are several ways of doing this, and some of them I just have concocted here for this video because I don't really have a problem here with my lathes, but many of you do. So let's go back on over to the Logan lathe and uh, talk about how that spindle can be locked. Remember that your lathe is a precision piece of machinery and you've got to protect it. You've got to protect your bed here. Don't lay tools on it. You've got to uh, just uh, do everything with great finesse so that you don't uh, uh, Armstrong it and, and ruin the lathe because there's precision built into it. Alright, enough on that. I would like this video to be a forum for uh, other people that have had this problem and have solutions. So if this has occurred to you uh, or happened to you and uh, 
good remedies, good solutions have occurred to you, go ahead and put those in the comments. And you other people, look through the comments and you might uh, find an answer to your dilemma. Okay, one way of uh, doing this is to put hexagon stock into the three-jaw chuck because you're probably going to have a three-jaw chuck, so that's what I'm talking about now. And here's different sizes, but this happens to be inch and one-eighth. And then uh, using your impact wrench, and in this case I got the old uh, Black & Decker here, heavy duty. But you certainly can use an air one or whatever you got. And probably without uh, the machine in back gears, take it out of back gears, and uh, with the machine unplugged you can grip the cone pulley here probably just with your hands because you know you use, you've used these before but in reverse just give it a rat a tat 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 a few times and see if it breaks loose because that's going to give it that repeated jolt and we need a jolt to break it loose so rat a tat tat and j just try that and if you have an air powered one or uh, try it at different pressures but again being careful not to overdo it and damage it but uh, th this may be a very good solution because you're getting a hundred little taps just with the squeeze of the trigger. So what do you think of that? Be sure and use proto sockets. By the way, those are impact sockets. Do not use a chrome one. If you've got a decent strap wrench on flat pulleys like this, cone pulleys, this uh, should be a pretty good solution but of course it can't be a cheap little thing like this with a rubber strap or or one that is uh, made for removing oil filter so that will not do at all let's step it up a notch now here's a strap wrench made by rigid and I only have this in back ears now to provide tension for what I'm doing here so this is just a mock-up but I think you can get a pretty good grip with a heavy-duty strap wrench like this and uh, these come in different sizes and different materials and the larger step that you are on the pulley the more wrap you have and the more friction you will have however this strap isn't quite long enough to go around the large pulley so that's why I'm in the middle here and you can move this out of the way wherever you you need that so uh, by pulling up you see that jams and that seems to have some a great deal of tightness but I'm not totally sure on that you can also wrap some abrasive cloth around the pulley with the grit side around the pulley and that'll give it some grip and some friction so consider one of these if you have it now absolutely do not use a chain wrench because they make chain wrenches for plumbers also but those have teeth on them and would have to grip into the pulley so I would say that's a no-no but Consider these strap wrenches if you have one or can borrow one. Many of you watched my video several years back when I was still in my sixth decade and I made a, a belt for this very lathe. As a matter of fact, this, this is it. And it was this material and I had to slit it because this is a little too wide and I happen to have in stock an entire roll of that. But by wrapping that around the largest pulley here, and in some way or another gripping it here and you could slide something over here or you could maybe put a vice grips on there or even drill holes and use screws or whatever uh, little idea you can think up to lock that and hold it in place wrap it around the rear bumper of your car and pull on it if you can grip it tight enough right here and that might lock the spindle for you However, when you tap on this, I understand that there's going to be some resiliency and we want to eliminate any kind of bounce. We want it to be firm so that when we tap on it, uh, all of the energy is applied to the screw thread. And this could be leather. In this case, this is some kind of fabric. Similarly, and I'm back to the Atlas lathe here now, and uh, this is essentially what I did over with the Logan, only this has V-pulleys, as you well know, 
And how are you going to lock that again to avoid damaging these gears? I took a brand new V-belt, which was uh, 56 inches long, although that's irrelevant. It's what I had in the stock. I sawed it in half. Wasted the $8. And this is a piece of three-quarter inch pipe. And I'm just trying to think of now a way to grip this and lock it. And notice that I'm around the largest pulley. I have the most wrap. I have the most friction. And if I can draw this up, as my dad would say, tighter than a bull's hind end in blowfly season. Draw that up as much as I can. And then there needs to be a way to lock it here. So possibly a vice grips or even drill a hole through there. Whatever you can think of. Some kind of clamp. And this resting against the cast iron here, I'm feeling right now, well, it's slipping a little bit, but that it's fairly tight. And the tighter I can drive that in there, up against the V-belts, the more it's going to lock. So I think that this might be a very good solution for some of you. So think about that. And now here's my grand finale, the coup d'etat. Let's see what you think of this for locking. And this requires a lot of work, but this is something you might have to do. All right, another way of locking the spindle here that I thought up is, and this can be done on any lathe. I'm showing you on a Logan. But you will have to custom make this device for whatever lathe and, and the length of the spindle. And I know I got the chuck off, and you're saying, well, this is senseless now that you got the chuck off. Well, this chuck wasn't stuck, but this will help illustrate here. Now, this is a piece of 5-8 stock, but you could make it bigger. Well, I think you can go up to about 7 8 on these spindles. And you want it to be heavy, not just a little piece of threaded rod. But the problem is that we need a left-hand thread. Well, how are you going to get a left-hand thread, and where are you going to get a left-hand nut? Well, the left-hand nut I bought down at Ace Hardware, and those are three bucks. Get on there. Lefty tighty here. I'm going to stop right here and give you a little film clip of me cutting this thread. So study that and I'll be right back. I'm trying to think out of the box and think of other solutions. And uh, if you do not ha have a left hand uh, nut and all of that, here, here's another thing that you can do. Get yourself a heavy duty turnbuckle. And you can get those at the hardware store. I'm going to cut away here with, with a picture of one because you don't want a cheap aluminum one. This is extruded aluminum. There's no strength at all. But here you have a piece of, this is a right hand thread, this is a left hand thread. You have a nice piece of left hand uh, thread there, and this can be cut off on your, your steel one, and that, that is your nut. And yes, you're going to have to do some fabricating and maybe welding, but I just wanted to tell you a source of left hand uh, uh, threads and nuts, uh, but that'll be $12 for that one that I'm going to show you in these stills here. So I'll cut away for that real quick, and uh, I'll leave the rest of that up to you, and then we'll get back here to this business at hand. Okay, I'm back, and I hope those little clips helped you. So I made several other parts here on the lathe. And this one is designed to fit right here, and you'll have to custom make that for your lathe spindle, whatever size. This is a number two more staper. That's a 5 8 hole. And then I also made this one for the other end. That'll go right here. On this end of the 5 8 rod, I have uh, made a bushing, spacer, whatever you want to call it here, and I have, uh, I have pinned it, but you certainly can weld that or fasten it some other way, but set screws will not do. You really need to drill all the way through, and that's a, a 3 16 roll pin. Now, I'm going to put this together. Now watch this. The rod goes into the headstock end, 
and on the other end this followed with a flat washer which may or may not be needed put a little oil on that thread because we want to draw this down tight lefty tighty get that as tight as you can now that this nut has been tightened and it's going to self tighten even more but using my S&K 1516 socket and a long half inch drive uh, breaker bar and this needs to rest up against something and right here it happens to hit the corner of the chip pan which is rounded so that's not going to do at all so I'll put it up against this piece of wood but you need to have a, some way to anchor that you can also put a pipe over this that's of the right length and it could uh, strike the floor but be careful you don't lift the lathe up or that is jack the lathe up by uh, too much leverage now that the spindle is locked in that manner and this may tighten a little bit more before the chuck gives but at this point presumably we're going to be able to muscle it of course that is has no tightness at all uh, and use as large a crescent wrench as you uh, think you need hopefully break it loose and you may need to tap on this with a lead hammer so that's the final solution I hope that uh, that is usable but it's quite a bit of work to make that took me a lot of time even for the demonstration here so hopefully this uh, will help some of you out there that have this stuck chuck syndrome and uh, allow you to get those chucks off I hope that you find uh, this video uh, entertaining and useful and this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now. Be sure and watch my many other videos and I'll see you in my next video.